Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more CNSL 5. This is Group B of the round of 16, and this is the winner's match. We have Fengji, who was able to take down Yoon, the Korean pro gamer, uh, in that best of one, Zerg vs. Zerg. Very well done, and here he is playing against actually a friend of his in Scan here in the top right. Scan, of course, uh, defeating our Polish player, Ziggy. Uh, who tried to do a one base build, but Scan just like deflected it so hard. It, 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 oh man, a player of Scan's caliber can certainly make you feel the fool when you try to cheese him sometimes. Uh, of course, Ziggy not out of it, it yet, uh, neither is Yoon. They will be playing in that losers match best of three after this best of three. So we are on Nemesis and Nemesis is a very different, very interesting map. It's like a, a modified version of the blockchain map that we had in the past. Uh, it's kind of inspired by Outsider, right? I've talked about this so, so many times. You have the double eggs here. I'll catch it as the Overlord flies over this side. You have the geysers. You have the mineral patch to drill through with the uh, with the worker, right? Uh, and then, of course, you have the expansions here. And you have ways into the middle of the map as well. So this map actually doesn't have that many resources. I got to throw out. It's a four-player map, uh, but it's only got 12 bases. And that's, um, it's a little bit weird, right? Like, I, I think most four-player maps have like 16 bases. <laughs> so uh, you definitely don't have all that much to work with. Now here you see the double eggs, right? So you kill the eggs and you can walk army through. If you kill the geysers, you kill one, only small units go through. You kill two, nothing goes through, right? And no, you cannot like build on them or anything to reset that up. They're unbuildable. So uh, it definitely makes for like an interesting dynamic on the map. By the way, this is buildable terrain up here. So like, for instance, if you wanted missile turrets up there, that is something that you could end up doing. I don't know that we'll end up seeing that. That's too far away to be repaired or really anything like that, but maybe in like a TVT. Anyways, uh, Scan right now is going for a wall-in. Uh, obviously a, a great move uh, that it just basically makes it so you don't have to make a bunker. Uh, on the other side, we have Fengji actually going for a quick pool here. Looks like it was a nine pool and he's going to get over when there's about one Marine out. The second one will be almost out and a bunker actually being made as opposed to uh, another depot there. The depot being made in the main base. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Not what I was expecting. I thought he would build the second depot and then just kind of chill with SCVs. But actually what this does is allows the second Marine to get in. Whereas if you already had the SCVs blocking here, you have to pull everything out, get the Marine in, put everything back, and maybe things could have gone wrong. Uh, so, I mean, this is, this is a big safety precaution. I think that Here's the thing. Fengji is a very strong player. Scan knows him well. And I think that Scan is completely aware of Fengji's power, like how strong he is. And Scan, I would say the Scan is looking at this and saying we can err on the side of safety a little bit. Because as long as nothing goes terribly wrong, Scan should be in good shape to win the game, right? Like it's it just, he is a different level from Fengji. Maybe Fengji is like a. Uh, 2400, 2500 Zerg, something like that, which is definitely something that can give an upset. Uh, but Scan is more like a 27, 2800 Terran and Korean Terran at that. So that's like <laughs> perfect latency playing like that. So anyways, uh, enough talk of that. One thing I do want to mention about this map, I know it looks like it has mass ramps everywhere. Everything is flat except for these high ground areas that I already pointed out. Uh, now, this SCV going over, it is going to try to scout and see if there's a base in here. Of course, he will jump through. The Zergling cannot follow and see that there is, in fact, a hatchery. Uh, and then go up to scout elsewhere also. Now, the Lings come over and start working on this assimilator. So, if they end up killing both, this is not walkable terrain. That's probably what he wants to do here. You don't want to... Like, if you only kill one, Marines can still get through, which is... <laughs> like, all Terran is going to make anyways. Okay, so the layer is on the way. By the way... It, Enough has happened here, and I've been kind of talking my head off that I didn't get to mention, even though I showed on camera, uh, there was an offensive gas from Scan, which is not the strongest move from Terran, but sometimes you can do it against Zerg and just push their gas back a little bit, and that's very, very strong. Uh, most of the powerful Zerg builds right now are based off of the Mutalisks coming out rather quickly, and pushing them back at all is actually a very strong play. So nicely done. Uh, from Scan to kind of uh, throw that wrench in the plans of Fengji. 
Now, back at home, Scan is going for a plus one rush, and there's the Academy as well. Uh, will it be five racks plus one? I think so. It could end up being four, though. That is a possibility, uh, but not a big surprise, right? If you slow the gas at all, it turns into more of a three hatchery mutilisk timing, which means that you have plenty of time to start plus one first and to get five barracks up before you have to make a single turret. So, uh, looks pretty good. Now, we have this killed off, right? These geysers. So, this is no longer passable. It doesn't matter if you kill these eggs. Nothing gets through there. Um, here's, here's what I'm thinking about is if this turns out to, oh, it's not, oh, this is a completely new build. This is fascinating to me. Okay. We got to talk about this. So normally if you go for a fast engineering bay, you always go up to four or five barracks so that you can really abuse that plus one attack. And now what I was going to talk about was how, because you can close these off, Plus one attack builds would not be as good on this map because you only have to defend the front. So if you're only defending one base, you make three sunkens, then four, then five, whatever it is that you need. You don't have multiple locations that Terran can attack, which is what you're looking for with those high pressure builds, right? Like the plus one attack. So I was I was literally about to talk about I was a little bit nervous for him, but this is a very fast factory. So Scan is actually only going three racks. He's just getting the plus one because he could, I guess and running up that tech tree. Now, this could be a modified crazy Terran. This could be a Valkyrie rush, a dropship rush, just running up to a vessel. I don't know because I've never seen this before. Definitely something fresh, something new. Uh, in the meantime, Fengji with that Queen's Nest. He's got the Spire. He is making some Mutalisks. The Queen's Nest is incredibly fast, so this might turn into a Guardian all-in, but with the Starport this quick... It's hard for me to imagine that working. Yeah, like there's no evolution chamber. I was going to suggest it could be like a crazy Zerg build. Uh, and in fact, like it still can turn, right? Like he still could go Defiler Mound or something like that, but it doesn't really fit well here. This definitely looks like a Guardian Rush. But yeah, this Starport is just so fast. There's a science facility. So this, it isn't exactly crazy, Terran, but like this is such a quick science facility that he's going to get plus two started unbelievably quickly like this is the crazy Terran is just like a kind of a meme build that people are messing around with for a little bit that was the fastest plus two attack you could literally get with Terran <laughs> but uh it never really caught on it wasn't that good it's it's win rate was pretty low uh this is just a very fast plus two that he's going to be able to get and like he's completely safe I feel kind of bad for Fengji looking at this game right now I have to say because Scan looks invincible to me right now. Like, everything he's done is very intelligent. It all looks really well thought out. Like, look, that is super fast plus two. The Mutas can't get anything done. Like, there's so much bio being pumped out. His worker count is at 42, which is super, super healthy. Here comes a Vessel. Like, the macro really hitting its stride. In the meantime, over here, this is not the Guardian Rush that I was thinking it was. It's kind of funny. After... Hive finished, he got his Hydralis Den is starting Lurker upgrades uh, and getting into Filer Mound, and here is the Evolution Chamber. So normally, guys, what happens is you kind of go uh, the Den as well as the, the Queen's Nest at the same time. Uh, so this is a bit different in that way. Ah, uh, there is the Greater Spire. Okay, so yeah, that... I mean, it's different what Fengji is doing, but it makes a little bit more sense now that he is getting to Greater Spire because the, the Lurkers were not well-timed to go with any sort of normal strategy, any sort of normal build. Uh, and we'll see what he can get done with those Guardians. Like, they might be defensive. Oh, dude, what are you doing? Just run him back, run him back. Jeez, you're being so... Not careful at all, man. Uh, but yeah, is he going to use them for harassment? Is he going to use them for defense? Like, if you try to bust Sunkins and there's Guardians over him, man, it's pretty sick. Now, this uh, forward lurker egg is to screw up the AI of this bio. He is going to run into the sunks now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's actually busting these sunken so quickly. Three of the units do run away to the other side. Oh, man. Well, he does get the lurkers out before all the sunkens are dead, and I guess that's what really matters. This will stop the bio. Almost certainly. Like, three lurkers, yeah. Okay, he irradiates onto that defiler. Okay, that's that's good. Now, that's one irradiate, and now we have a dropship and a second dropship on the way. So the Guardians actually have 
reasonable potential. If this was a high ground, like, without walking terrain, these Guardians would be backbreakers. But because they're going to fly over somewhere that Marines can walk up, Scan has counterplay to them. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Did you see that Scan? Scan just scanned the Guardians that were sitting right here. That's insane. <laughs> Just a beautiful, beautiful move. In the meantime, Feng Shi has gone ahead and snuck a hatchery down at 6 o'clock. That's going to be a hard one to figure out. Double dropship going across the map right now. So definitely some potential for damage there. Scourge starting to pop out. He does a scan over in this area. It looks like he's looking for a place to unload. And Scourge came out, but they went to the wrong side. Like, if he caught one of these dropships, that would be a pretty big moment. Now, he is going to go ahead and dive bomb out and easily kill this base. He's going to get rid of the Nidus, so that base is dead. In the meantime, the Guardians come over, and they're getting some Marines. But like I said, because he can walk up here, he has that counterplay, where the Guardians, even though they can be, like, pretty efficient and do a reasonable job, if they were, like, overground that Marines can't walk under you're not getting rid of him for quite some time because he's only got one vessel and he already used the Irradiate. So, uh, kind of wild what we're looking at here. Like, every single thing has worked out beautifully for Scan. Every single thing. He's killed this base. He's killed the Evolution Chamber. Uh, he just killed all of the Guardians. He busted most of the Sunkens already, so it's easier to counterattack there later. Right? Uh, did he lose the dropships, actually? I didn't really catch that. Ah, uh, throw some irradiates down. Does end up losing one of the vessels, but oh my god, he's just gonna kill everything. <laughs> the fire bat does end up finishing off. Oh my god, he's gonna try to kill this with one fire bat. That's so funny. It's like, yeah, target the marines if you want. The fire bat is actually what's gonna end up killing this. It's gonna take a very long time, but he does indeed. Okay, double starport is producing. We have the double eBay upgrading as well. Two one upgrades are done. There is really nothing left here for Fangji. Uh, I didn't see the dropships, by the way, so maybe they did get picked off. Which means that this Bioforce is, like, a little bit stuck right now. Like, they could kill this off. It looks like Fangji is starting to stop that, I guess. A couple scans going off here as well. He does spot that base. Yeah, he doesn't scan the 6 o'clock yet, so the 6 o'clock is still pretty well hidden. And, I mean, if Zerg has a base that you don't know about... That can definitely prolong the game a bit. You play differently if they have three gas or... Yeah, I just keep checking those scans where they're at. I want to know when he figures out about that base. Because he definitely doesn't know about it yet. I think he doesn't, at least. <laughs> uh, okay. What? Let, let's try to figure out what the idea is going to be here. So, Scan is killing these eggs. And he wants to come down and kill this base, for sure. No. Still didn't find it. Uh... As far as Fengji goes, he's really going to have to rely on this base, which, by the way, he definitely needs to sp split these uh, drones. With the split mineral patches, these drones will never fix themselves. You have to manually split the, uh, the separate patches. But Scan has massive map control. Look at this. 59 uh, supply to 130. 35 to 53 workers. Like, Fengji is so far behind. He's super far behind in upgrades as well. And it looks like, I mean, we're getting like a melee attack and plus two carapace right now for, for Fengji. So this is going to turn into Ultra Ling Defiler. It might take a little bit, though. Uh, you know, he, he does have the three gas, so he technically can go Ultra. Looks like, okay, Scan now knows what's going on. He's sent this down here. Yeah, he scans the actual location. The SCV actually came down to kind of check what was going on. Uh, and realizes that, nope, this has been killed, so obviously this has been taken. This is a very hard base to end up killing. Double Lurker already ready, and the Nidus to just pop out what he needs. Looks like these geysers haven't been taken out, so he can still bust his way in. Few Marines coming down. Looks like Scan wanted to take this bottom right base, which is being lightly harassed here. <laughs> Has to send his Marines down and send another SCV. A new base for Scan here. Making his great place for a physics lab, if you ask me. <laughs> and he is going to be going into BC, which is actually the perfect play here. That's really probably how you want to end up finishing this game. Now a little stim forward here. Tries to throw the plague, but Scan very smartly splits off like five units to the front, the rest to the back. So the Defiler didn't have much choice there. Doesn't get a very big plague. 
And this is just like Fengji being completely starved out. Uh, if it weren't for this being like an island expansion, oh man. If it weren't for this being an island expansion, the game would already be over, I would say. Right? Like, it's taking him a long time to get in, but if he had... Like, let's say that this was a natural at another base that he could just walk to. He'd have so much pressure on the map that Fengji would have already folded. Uh, but as is, you know, obviously it's difficult to actually break through here. Oh, Fengji is actually taking down the eggs. That's, that's kind of interesting. It looks like he's decided that maybe this is the attack path for him. Since Scan is taking the bottom right. If Fengji can come through... Come through this area and take over this main base. Maybe that's, maybe that's like how you try to end up winning this. All right, some radiates going down. Like obviously you want to deny the bases from scan, but you need more bases as Fengji also. I think that's like a really important distinction to make here. By the way, this got shut off, so Fengji can't get anything in here. <laughs> You'd have to go all the way around to these geysers or get the drop upgrade, which is not likely. Now we have Scan actually on three starports going battle cruisers. He is getting that plus one ship attacks. That makes it so that Scourge, no matter how many care pace they have, will be one shotted by BCs. Really makes the, the battle cruisers live a lot longer. In the meantime, Fengji, he's doing a little bit of a swarm push into this bottom right. Definitely doable. Like he can he can knock this base down if he just swarm pushes. But some vessels coming down. All right, gets a couple of the lurkers there. Nice little stim up and retreat there from Scan. All right, another couple of radiates, so no more lurkers left over. He has the defilers, but that's kind of funny. <laughs> Not much to do about it. Bunkers being put down all over the place. Fengshi is actually starting to bank a lot of money, so he is going to be able to pop out what it is that he wants. Does he want ultras? Does he want... Looks like right now he's focusing more heavily on lurker. Which I don't mind at all. I think you want to wait for all your uh, Ultros upgrades and, uh, you know, hopefully a fourth gas. Don't know if he's going to be able to get that one, though. All right, so a couple Lurkers come in with the Dark Swarm. And this base potentially can be killed. I guess we'll see how many Irradiates he's going to be able to throw it on. One, two, th about three Irradiates. So, yeah, he will end up saving this base. A little bit of sloppiness going on right now, but not a big deal here for Scan. Throws his BCs forward now. They almost have that plus one, but the Scourge have no uh, armor upgrades anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Now, maybe time for some Plagues. Plague's definitely going to uh, bring that health down quite a bit. And then, of course, Dark Storm with Hydra is the best way... That, that combination, right? You plague the BCs, and you Dark Swarm and Hydra them, and obviously they can't fight against that. You just have to run. And he will knock down one of the BCs, it looks like. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he does. He does end up getting that. Fengji's still sitting here on three base. Scan on four. And that's just not a, a pace that you can maintain as Zerg, unfortunately. It uh, looks like he's getting Hydra range now. So... Like, the Hydra range upgrade is probably to help deal with BCs, but Plague Hydra, obviously very, very strong. Uh, you can kind of plague down any air units and gun them down with Hydras. Ooh, some Scourge actually coming over to kill the uh, Science Vessels. But one thing to mention is that Scan made the three BCs, and now he's switched back into Science Vessels. So, I mean, Irradiate is going to be more than enough here, I would say. Darkstorm goes down, but Scan is going to go ahead and break through here. Oh my god, that is a lot of overlords dying. 77 of 77. Supply blocks him. Moves into the natural, and he's going to kill off everything, man. A ton of drones. The hatchery, the ultras cavern, the plus two melee attack. Looks like it'll be going down as well. Oh no, that's plus three melee attack even. Sick upgrades on Fengshi, but that is not going to be enough. He just doesn't have anything left over. Like, BCs are absolutely destroying this base. Nothing left. Nothing that can be done at all to save it. Six Ultras are on the way, but it doesn't matter. Like, even with these Ultras popping out, that is it. GG. Scan wins game one.